In top-down hierarchies, information flows in one direction from the top down. Now, some organizations have attempted to um, invert the pyramid and get the information flowing the other way, but you still don't uh, eliminate those, those, those perceptions that there's limited room for advancement uh, and the internal competition that arises from that perception. So again, internal competition is probably the, the, the biggest uh, drain on an organization's resources because it keeps people from working together. And because of internal competition, information silos uh, emerge. They are the emergent behavior. And information silos are essentially where information is not being shared throughout the organization because again, if I share my information with you and you do something really brilliant with it, you might look better than me and then you'll get promoted ahead of me. And this is a very subconscious feeling that people have. It's not, you know, it's not articulated really well, but they just kind of know, well, there's, there's only so much room and if, if somebody looks better than me, then they're going to look more capable of, of doing the job I'm doing. Another emergent behavior in, in top-down hierarchies is control that leads to rules. They love to try to control things because, well, we have a desire for control, don't we? We want things to turn out the way we want them to, to turn out. But when, when, emerge, when behaviors emerge and you make a rule against them, then you never really didn't find out what was going on underneath that anyway. You don't know why that behavior emerged. You simply slapped a rule on top of it to keep it from happening again. But you haven't solved the problem. It's like having some kind of a illness or issue and taking a medication or you know, putting a Band-Aid on a wound that won't heal. It, um, it's still festering underneath. And so another um, behavior of, uh, or another emergent behavior in top-down hierarchies is unwanted turnover. This is when the people who have information that's important to the organization leave because they're so frustrated. They're so tired of the situation that they just want to go and find another situation. And this is probably the biggest drain in an organization's resources because people are really the capital investment in any organization. They're the ones that have the information, they're the ones that create things, and ignoring that is paramount to um, death. What has been the top-down hierarchy's answer to all of this? Personality testing, right? Again, the problem is the people. But I don't care how much personality testing you do, if you don't get people on the same page and have regular conversations, even daily conversations, then you're not going to have the type of situation outcomes that you really desire. So in top in uh, fractal organizations, there are two different types of employees. There are leaders and managers. Leaders are there to support managers by inspiring them through their shared vision, helping them grow their personal growth by mentoring them or you know, even guiding them through, co through conversations. And the managers are there to work with the material things, the workflow processes, the customers and client relationships. Things, processes, relationships are manageable. People are not manageable. You can try to control people, but you're only going to get compliance and not commitment. In the fractal organization, you can allow people to, to grow through their own development from beginner to expert, and then some people might choose to make the leap to leader. Not everybody might want to be a leader. People might want to continue just to work with things and processes, because that's what they're really good at. And other people might say, well, now that I'm an expert at this, I want to be a leader and help other people become really good at it too. A reason for all of this change is because there's a growing recognition in the need for universal participation. You know, it, the law of information dynamics states that if someone is a, sh a stakeholder in a situation, in other words, any decisions that get made within that situation have a direct out, you know, they, they affect that person in some way. They're a stakeholder, they're in the boat. If, if they are not actually part of the process of making the decision, then the outcome will not be an absolute truth. It'll only be relative truth because their information, their perspective was not shared in the situation. So all of the information that was really needed in order to make a decision is not making it into the decision-making process because the, pers the perspective of that person who's a, actually a, a stakeholder is not being taken into account. One of the reasons why so many people now want to assert their right to participate in processes in which they are co-creating with others is the internet. Everybody shares information. It's astounding what you can find. You can learn how to do anything on the internet. So there's this growing 
you know, society, cultural awareness that we're here to share information. We're not here to hoard it. We're not here to keep it from each other. We're here to use it to create better outcomes for, in our situations. And in fractal organizations, it's easier to share information because of the, uh, the constant feedback of information from the edges of the organization into the center. And then resources and information can flow back out to the edges. And feedback loops are a really important part of evolution. It's actually how evolution happens. There's something in the environment that causes sort of a deviation from the course. And so there has to be some kind of corrective, correcting action in order to you know, get that, the, the group back on track. And that is actually part of the whole evolutionary process. Something changes. Oh, well, here's a change. Now we have to make it, you know, we have to adapt to that change. So now we can be going with the flow again in the situation. And this is the process of evolution. And so in organizations, how do we, you know, how do we get that process um, going and keep it going and, and use it to our advantage? Well, through, primarily through conversation tools. Now there's a, a lot of good web-based collaboration tools now. People can share information with different document sharing, or you could have online conversations. Although many people, many organizations still rely on email to have conversations. And email is just, it's such a time sink and everybody's organizing the same information. There's a lot more useful ways to use technology to share information and to organize it for future use. Companies like Pixar have daily roundtable meetings. Um, the, again, within the teams, they meet every day to talk about their work. Uh, the animation that's going on or any technical development. And the reason they do this is because they know that, well, people go home every day. <laughs> it's like a bus that goes out onto the, you know, onto the streets of, of San Francisco and, and the mechanic doesn't know where the bus went and what happened to it that day. So the bus comes back and the mechanic just has to check the bus, kick the tires, fill the tank, check the oil, because you never know what happened to the bus. Same thing is with people. It might, somebody might get off track with their own idea about what something, what, what's going on in a situation or with the idea. So it, 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 companies like Pixar, they meet every day. Show us your work. Let's everybody get together and talk about where we're at. Make sure we're staying on the same page with the vision of the film. They realize that this is so important to their process of creating the best films. Their films are perfect because they take the time to plan, to meet, to have conversations, and to really work toward the best outcome. Companies like Pixar and Zappos use conversation tools, big sheets of paper on the wall, and people can, you can do this either in, in the context of a meeting or you could have it up over time, like over a period of a week or so. And people could just add things to it and then you could take that into a meeting. But these big, large format pieces of paper on the wall are, are ways for people to use not only words, but also drawings and even numbers or any other kind of symbols that are, that are coming to them. It's a very creative process. Mind mapping is another very, um, uh, popular process that's been around for a couple of decades now and is now available as software too for virtual teams. But again, this is the idea of let's take a topic and flush out all of the aspects of that topic. And what this allows in a, in a conversation with a team, with leaders, it allows the, the, the leader to um, invite participation without having to select a particular idea if it's not lined up with the vision. It's also an opportunity for the leader to, to say, yeah, that's a really good idea. And maybe if it was tweaked a little more this way, it would be more in alignment with what we're, real, what, what we're doing. So it, it, through that process, the leader is encouraging the creativity of the manager of whatever thing or process to, think, to guide their creative process toward the, the collective outcome. 